So I recently got a comment on another video prior of somebody wanting to know how to do the discounted cash flow model. So there are some formulas that are still in these cells. I'll open them up and show you guys throughout the process, but I'm leaving them there to kind of make this video go faster because to do it straight from scratch would probably take a really long time. Um, so I have this model here. Basically all of the, the cells that are highlighted in blue are gonna be the ones that you have to manually input things into. The ones that are kind of in that burgundy or purplish uh, tone are gonna be ones that have formulas in them already. So I'm gonna be doing Apple. Um, obviously I'm doing this on a Mac product, so it might be slightly different from what you would see on Microsoft Excel. But if you know how to use one, then I think you pretty much know how to use the other or can figure out how to use the other pretty easily. Um, so I'm just going to go down to formula here. I'm going to insert a stock quote uh, since we're doing Apple here. I'm going to put Apple, change this to the name, and then I'm going to do the same thing on all of these. So then we're going to put the market cap for Apple here. And then pretty self-explanatory, just putting the share price next. Now for the discount rate, you can really put anything you want here, but this is basically the rate of return that you want on your investment. What I like to do is I like to take the treasury yield, which is considered a risk-free rate, which right now is around 4%-ish. Um, and then I like to add the CPI into that to see where we're at with inflation. I like to combine the two because I want my investment to not only beat inflation, but I also want it to beat the risk-free return. Um, so we're at, I think, 6.5% and about 4%. You can look these up online. You can just Google 10-year treasury yield or uh, CPI numbers. So for this discount rate, I'm going to use 11% because if I combine the two, it's going to be close to that. For the perpetual rate, what you want to do for the perpetual rate is you want to put something along the lines of historical inflationary numbers or um, historical numbers at which the U.S. economy or GDP grows. Um, because eventually as companies get older and mature and become bigger and bigger, they can only grow so much. They can't, at some point, they can't outpace the whole economy of the country. So for the perpetual rate, I like to put either 2 or 3%. So I'm going to go with 3. Um, then just in this box, I just have 1 plus the discount rate. So And you'll you'll see where this comes in later. But it's basically just taking 1 plus. If you were to change 11% to a decimal, it would be 0.11. So like I said, it's just taking 1 plus uh, cell B5 here. Now moving down further here. For these blue cells here, I like to take the prior five years or so of free cash flow to kind of get an idea of how fast it's growing and then use that as a basis to move forward with. Um, so you can find these numbers from, I have a website here called Stock Analysis, um, but there's a lot of number or a lot of uh, different websites out there that you can use. So then the most recent free cash flow, we're just going to, Basically copy and paste all these numbers here. And realistically, if you wanted to skip this step, you could. Um, if you go look at these type of websites, you can see the percentage change in free cash flow growth and you could just make an estimate based off of that if you wanted to. I like to just put everything on one sheet and kind of visualize it. So then in order for these purplish cells here to get a number in it, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the cash flow that's right above it in the current year and you're going to put that in parentheses. You're going to subtract it from the prior year's cash flow and the parentheses, and then you're going to divide that by the prior year's uh, free cash flow in order to get a percentage change. And you're going to do that with all of them. 
And if you want, you can manually put these in the cells or you can use um, the dollar sign functions to just kind of copy and paste that on each uh, cell there. So anyways, we come up with all these numbers so we can see from uh, year five in the prior years, we went up 24%, then it went down 8%, then it went up 25, up 27, and up 20%. So we get to an average uh, cash flow percentage change of 17%. I always like to be a little bit conservative in my estimates, so I'm probably going to go lower than that. But um, you can do whatever you'd like. So the next step is going to be to put your percentages that you want in in your uh, estimates for the next however many years you're going to do it. In this case, um, we're going out 10 years here. So for the next 10 years. So I'm going to start off with 15%. Um, I'll do another 15 and then I'll kind of start tapering it down. I'll go 12, 12, and then we'll do 10. And then the last year or so, we'll just taper it down even more there. So what I did for this cell here is I took the free cash flow in the prior year. I multiplied that by one plus the growth rate. So the growth rate here is gonna be this 15%. This is our assumption. And when you multiply the prior free cash flow uh, times that growth rate, uh, the reason you wanna put one here is because you want it to be one plus so you want it to be the prior year plus the 15%. You don't want it to just show 15% of whatever this is. Um, and then you'll come up with this number. You're basically going to be doing this for every single cell. And so, for instance, for the next year, I just took the cell here and multiplied it by 1 plus the growth rate here. And then essentially you're going to do that all the way out through 10 years. And then it's just going to automatically calculate. So... Um, if I wanted to change one of these to 14%, you'll see those numbers change there. I'll put it back to 15 for the time being. Now, the next step is you're going to want to discount these cash flows back to the present value. So that's going to be this row here. So for this, what you're going to do is you're going to take the free cash flow estimated in year one. And this is where the one plus discount rate is going to come in. You could do it without that, but it just kind of makes the steps more simple. Um, so you're going to take the free cash flow in this year. You're going to divide it by, and you want to put this in parentheses too, so that way um, it'll make sure that it calculates it correctly. Um, you're going to take that one plus the discount rate to whatever power of the year that it is. The other way you could do this is if you wanted to just do the free cash flow year divided by, you could just put type in one and then plus the discount rate. You could use this formula or this cell up here. So that way it'll, you can change it in the formula. And then same thing, put it to the power of whatever year it is. So I'll go out to year six, for example. On this one, you're still going to be doing the same thing. You're going to take the free cash flow of that year. You're going to divide it by the one plus discount rate here. And then to the six power for this one, because this is the sixth year. And then so you can see here that it's discounting these numbers back. So instead of 233, it's discounting it to 125. Um, if we were to discount 128, it's in the next year. So there's less of a discount here because it's only the first year, so it's dropping it down to 115. Okay, and the next step, I was going to go to the perpetuity value, but I see it's giving a negative number, and the reason is this this or this or perpetual rate is not in percentage form. So let me just change that really quickly, and that should cure that issue. And eventually, you know, if once you do this enough and you, you learn it enough, you'll realize when there's a mistake and you'll be able to kind of correct it yourself. So next for the perpetuity value, what you're going to want to do is not the discounted rate, but you're going to want to take the free cash flow estimate for year 10. 
uh, use that as the first cell. Then you want to multiply that and you're going to want to put these in parentheses so that way it does the calculations correctly. You're going to multiply one plus the perpetual rate here and the parentheses and then you're going to want to divide it by put this in parentheses as well but you're going to want to subtract the discount rate from the perpetual rate and end the parentheses. And so you can see here this is the the formula or the cells that it's using and then that'll get you your perpetuity value and then you want to discount that perpetuity value back to the present value so you're going to take the number that you just got in that cell you're going to divide it by one plus the discount rate up here and then you're going to put it to the nth power and in this case we're estimating 10 years out so you're going to use 10 for that. If you were estimating only 5 years and you didn't have 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, you would put 5 to the power of 5. So it's however many years that you're estimating out. And then that's going to get you that discounted perpetuity value. Next, you want to add up all of the discounted cash flows. So that's going to take all of the present value here that you discounted it back to, and you're going to be adding all of those up. So you can see here, I'll open up the formula. I just did a sum and then this whole row here. And that's gonna give you the sum of your discounted cash flows. Now for the total equity value, you're gonna to wanna to take the sum of your discounted free cash flow and you're gonna add that to the discounted perpetuity value to get your total equity value. So it's just the cell plus this cell here and then you're going to get that number. Now the share is outstanding. You can just go on to pretty much any website. You can just Google if you were to type in something along the lines of Apple's shares outstanding. Uh, sometimes different websites will have slight variations on how many shares are outstanding. They're usually not by a whole lot, so it's not a huge deal. Um, so I put that down here. And, and just know that companies that either issue shares or buy back shares, which Apple buys back shares, that number is probably going to decrease at some point. So at some point, you're going to have to come back into this model and reduce that number. Or for whatever reason, if they were to acquire some company and issue more shares, then you might have to increase that number. But then basically, I just converted the shares outstanding. And so you can see the cell here. You're just taking the shares outstanding and dividing it by a million. And then you come up with that number there, just to kind of reduce all of the, the numbers after the commas or zeros after commas. Now, for the per share value, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the total equity value here, and you're gonna divide it by the converted uh, shares outstanding. And then that's gonna give you a per share value so now I have these conditionally formatted here, so you can see if you click show highlighting rules here, it'll be slightly different on Excel. Um, but I have one where if it's greater than or equal to the share price up here, which is $134.76, then it's going to highlight it in green um, because then that tells us, okay, um, we at our... Uh, return rate that we're looking for, we can buy this uh, comfortably. If it were to be less than, I have it highlighted in red. So if I go change, I'll uh, exit out of this. If I go change this discount rate to like 20%, um, it's going to severely affect this. It drops it down to 71. You can see it changed from green to red. Um, but I'm going to switch this back to 11% now. And then so this here is going to be a price plus a margin of safety. So for... I would say for, for companies that are kind of at the top of their, their market and they're pretty solid companies, you usually don't need 30%, maybe something more like 20% or 15, something along those lines. Um, but obviously it's up to you and how conservative you want to be. But I do recommend putting some sort of margin of safety here. And so for the margin of safety, you're just, you don't need any formula in that cell. You're just typing whatever you want as the percentage for the price plus the margin of safety. You're gonna take this per share value that we calculated here and multiply it by one minus the margin of safety. And you wanna subtract that out of the per share value here 
to lower it so that way on top of your estimates for how fast you think up here that the free cash flow is going to grow, you also have a margin of safety down here. So that way, if your estimates of, of cash flow growth happen to be off by a lot, you still have this margin of safety here as kind of an extra shield. You don't necessarily have to do that after you get the per share value. You could just say, oh, the per share value is 172. I'm willing to buy Apple anything below 172 uh, to get that 11% return that we're looking for. I always like to put a margin of safety on there just to be more conservative. Of course, these are, you know, based on the assumptions that we put up here and here. Of course, these assumptions could turn out to be way higher or way lower. Um, so that's precisely why I always put a margin of safety on there. And so don't take these models as 100% precise. You know, obviously it depends on your assumptions and if the company ends up meeting those assumptions. But that is essentially how you make a basic discounted free cash flow model. That's how I set it up. Of course, there's other ways to do it. Um, and there's other formats in doing this. But I just wanted to make this video because somebody requested it on the last one. So hopefully this made sense. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And I can maybe clarify certain things for you. Um, and if you'd like any more discounted uh, cash flow models on any other companies and valuating them, let me know in the comments uh, what company specifically. Like if you want to see me do Tesla or Microsoft or any other companies, I'd love to make a video on them and kind of come up with a per share value estimate plus a margin of safety. And we can kind of go over that. Um, I also have a couple other models that I like to do for things like revenue when companies aren't necessarily generating cash flow at the moment. You can use a revenue model. If you'd like something like that for kind of companies that don't generate cash flow, let me know in the comments and I'd be willing to show that as well. Or if you guys have any other video suggestions, just drop them in the comments and um, I'll take a look. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one.